Well, hello and welcome to Mono Lake, California, a large lake, a special lake, I would say, that sits just east of the Sierras um, in, I guess, central California, not too far from the Nevada border. Uh, and Mono Lake has just a really fascinating geologic story. Uh, this lake sits in a completely enclosed basin, and so there's no outlet. Um, all the water that comes in here is through uh, runoff by snowmelt and rain, and then groundwater that uh, percolates up through here. And Mono Lake, I guess it's famous for a couple of reasons. Um, so we're going to explore some of the geology here at Mono Lake. Uh, thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey, out here at the end of the day, um, enjoying some of the spectacular geology on the east slope of the Sierras. So I'm really excited for you to join me here at Mono Lake. Um, of course, one of the main attractions here, and we're here at the south end of the lake, are these large and um, really quite spectacular tufa towers, these columns of rock, uh, no two alike almost. Some of them out in the water, some of them over here uh, on land. And so we're gonna explore these tufa towers. Let's start though with a, a map here and some history. This lake is actually um, much smaller than it used to be. During the Pleistocene, um, a few, let's say 20,000 or so years ago, this lake, so Mono Lake is shown on this map here in dark blue. The red line is Highway 395, the major interstate that runs through here. Uh, Yosemite National Park boundaries down here in green. And Mono Lake used to be a much larger lake named Lake Russell. And Lake Russell's extent you can see in the light blue here. So it was a much, much bigger lake than what we see today. In fact, it was um, about 600 feet higher, uh, much bigger and more aerial extensive. Of course, this was at a time when uh, glaciers, big glaciers were in the Sierra and the meltwater from those glaciers was coming down off the east side of the Sierras and helping to feed uh, ancient Lake Russell. So let's go um, to a different little map here I've got that shows, and this is from a USGS map, a really great um, map they put together. This is just one portion of it. And so what this shows is the uh, western extent of ancient Lake Russell um, and the old shoreline of Mono Lake out here as well. But it shows you more importantly how close these glaciers came uh, down these canyons. This is Lee Vining Canyon here into entering uh, Mono Lake. There's some of these tongues of these glaciers extending off the east slope of the Sierras. Of course the glaciers were moving outward from the high topographic crest here. So the bigger glaciers moved down to the west, uh, down those long valleys like you see in Yosemite. They had a lot more ice moving down them. The east slope of the Sierras due to the faulting is much steeper and so the glaciers were much shorter and narrow and didn't have as much ice uh, and mass as the ones that moved down off the west slope there. But two hopefully helpful maps that show and paint a little bit of a picture here as to what was going on uh, in the past. So let's take a look at these tufa towers. Um, and really when you think of these things, what we might call these is fossil springs in a way. Because what these are, each little tower is a place where Lake Russell or ancient Mono Lake, but when the lake was higher uh, and the groundwater was feeding into the lake, rising uh, upwards, that groundwater was carrying um, calcium and the carbonate that was already in the lake, those two uh, materials chemically bonded together to form calcium carbonate. And that's what tufa is. Tufa is a rock type. It belongs in the, the sedimentary family of rocks. It also is a type of limestone. Uh, so I didn't bring the acid bottle and they're trying to protect these, but if you hit this with acid, it fizzes like crazy. And if you saw my video at Pyramid Lake, you can see that. Uh, it's the exact same story for the most part. So this is a very porous, you can see all the holes in it, very porous uh, and permeable type of limestone called tufa that is precipitated in springs with that have the right chemistry or in lake water in this case. And so again, we're seeing, you can see these little holes. There's like a hole that goes right through this one there. 
uh, incredibly porous and kind of rubbly, but but sharp. These things are kind of sharp to the touch. Uh, they're hard enough in this desert climate that they actually, to some degree, resist erosion, and so they do form uh, steep slopes and little vertical faces. So each one of these is a fossil spring, and if we come down around the lake shore, we can see places down in here like this bench, this shelf, where the tufa is still being deposited. There's the, the chemistry of this water is such that it actually forms um, more tufa below the water line there. So the lake is very salty. I believe it's, I can't remember how many times, but many times saltier than the ocean. And that's because more water is evaporated uh, off the surface of it due to this arid climate than falls uh, due to precipitation. So they lose much more water than they gain, and therefore they get a salty water body, much like the Great Salt Lake, the Salton Sea, or the Dead Sea. Nice little section here of these fun little towers. Um, what else can I tell you about Mono Lake? Spectacular. You can, um, I believe you can kayak on it. Uh, we did that a number of years ago with students. I think there's some companies that will take you out on the lake in kayaks, which is a great way to explore the lake and see the towers. Uh, the lake also was the center of a big controversy, I suppose. It was threatened from, I think, about like the maybe the 40s or so, 50s through the 80s, uh, because there was diversions to Los Angeles of water that feeds this basin. And so the lake was shrinking quickly during that time. And uh, they were able to um, avert that environmental disaster, restore more water to the lake, and now it's at a fairly healthy and sustainable level. I don't know how that compares uh, historically, but uh, th those environmental efforts were, were pretty successful. So um, really spectacular location. What's interesting to me, if you watched my recent video on Pyramid Lake, um, we looked at some tufa towers there that had collapsed. And <clears throat> what's interesting to me in comparing just visually these tufa towers to the ones I saw at Pyramid Lake is here at Mono Lake, the towers are a little more regular. They're not, uh, in Pyramid Lake, they were more cylinders. Um, in cross-section view, as you looked down on one of the towers at Pyramid Lake, it had very uh, well-behaved concentric bands. When you look at the top of one of these, they're a little more irregular, kind of rubbly. Um, and so I'm not sure exactly why there's such a difference. Um, one hypothesis I have that could probably be looked at and tested is possibly here at Mono Lake, if the groundwater's coming up evenly, like um, homogeneously through all the material. So if the groundwater's rising through sand, let's say, but pretty much with no preferred pathway, then you might get um, tufa towers that look somewhat like this. I mean, or maybe it's just more irregular in terms of how it's coming up. Versus at um, Pyramid Lake, if the groundwater is coming up along discrete and um, specific pathways, conduits if you will, you might get more structured cylindrical type towers uh, in a place like that. But just a wonderful place. I mean, you got the Sierras, uh, the majestic Sierras to the west, these just fairyland of, of towers uh, out here in this beautiful calm lake. Uh, just one of the more gem locations here in, uh, I guess, the Basin and Range and the Sierras, at least where those two uh, provinces meet. So um, walk a little further here. In places we get these textures like this where it's a little more... Um, kind of like cauliflower, it's a little more smooth and not as sharp. Uh, and then when you look at the sides of some of these towers, that's when they become a little more uh, sharp and irregular. So we've got a little cottontail rabbit just right down here that he just jumped. So wonderful little habitat for this uh, and these organisms that live here. So hopefully you enjoyed this, a uh, little view and a little explanation an exploration of the wonderful Tufa Towers here at Mono Lake. Thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey. Hope you enjoy the geology education here. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, uh, let others know about it so we can uh, spread this information far and wide. And you're always welcome to donate through the thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer or 
by uh, going under the video description. There's a PayPal link as well there. So till next time, thanks for joining me from Mono Lake in Eastern California.